Hi, I'm Maggie O'Halloran. Welcome to my garden. Today we're going to talk about Plantago. I'm one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living and we are currently in my garden uh, here in Central Florida. Um, it's a warm 98 degrees outside and the mosquitoes are swarming. I'm really glad that I have my friend Plantago around. So Plantago is the name of the several of these plants. They all have something in common uh, with the venation that goes along the leaf like this. And we have several varieties that are used in really similar ways. We have Lanceolata, we have the Florida variety that the leaves are much smaller, only about this big, and they are kind of fuzzy, but they look like a smaller version of this one um, that's a little bit fuzzy with the way that the veins are going through the leaf. We also have Asiatica and Major, which are a couple of varieties that have the broader, bigger leaves. Um, the ones that I grow here in my garden are the bigger leaf variety so that I have access to more plant material. They seem to be really happy here in Central Florida. It's a leaf that we do use medicinally. <laughs> it has several common names. One of them is ribwort. You can see by the, the rib of the veins. Rosemary Gladstar describes this plant as one of the weedy wonders. So in her book, Herbal Recipes for Vibrant Health, she describes plantain. Um, and plantain is, you can tell by the plant that it's not the same as that delicious banana-like fruit that you enjoy. It's a completely different plant, um, super low growing and often considered a weed in, the, in many landscapes all over what we now call the United States. It's really nutritious and a wonderful poultice herb. So some of the qualities of plantain is that it's cooling and moistening. It's also astringent and that astringent quality or that drawing quality makes it really good to put on top of your skin for things like bug bites. I like to eat the leaves. They're pretty delicious as Rosemary mentioned in her book about it being really nutritious and that might mean nibbling on it from my garden or chopping it up and adding it to a salad. I can also, if I have um, a bug bite, and right now I'm getting a lot of them with the mosquitoes, I could take a leaf and I'd like to show you something about this leaf that makes it unique. So if I gently and I'm live, so I'm hoping it works this time. Usually it will. Um, gently tear it. You will see the stronger aspects of the plant that are holding that part together. And that's unique to the plantain. There are other plants that have that, the veination running along the leaf in this way, but plantain it's the, the uh, name ribwort partly because of that. It has these, uh, it's very strong holding it together in that way. So typically I would pick a leaf that wasn't recently nibbled on by bugs. So I'm going to take this part of the leaf. I'm just going to chew it up. This is called a spit poultice and it's completely safe as long as you don't have any mouth infections or anything going on because I'm applying this topically to one of my many mosquito bites. So I have a mosquito bite here. And I've chewed up a little bit of that plantain and I put it right on that mosquito bite. And if I had a Band-Aid, I'd apply it 
Another really common name for plantago or plantain or plant, uh, plantain, as some people refer to it because they want to distinguish it from that banana-like fruit that we all like because it's completely different. If I had a, it, it's also called the green band-aid because it's so beneficial topically. And this mosquito bite is already not itching at all, not feeling it at all. You can um, comment below if you've ever done this before or if you've made a spit poultice of anything else. Let me hear about it. You can also make a poultice without actually putting plant material in your mouth. You could even take dried plantain leaves, like from your first aid kit or something, and add a little bit of water. You could just use a little water from your water bottle, it doesn't have to be hot, and let the leaves moisten up a little bit, and then apply as well. It doesn't have to be a spit poultice. But it can be really helpful at drawing out those stingers, the bug bites. Um, I, Emily Ruff, the director of the school, she has also shared story about using plantain in this way on some old glass from a car accident that happened 10, 15 years ago, but she could still feel little pieces. She applied it at night for a week or so, and then the glass came right out. So it's really drawing and pulling anything out that shouldn't be there. So that's a poultice, and you can either make it as a spit poultice or with water. Um, any questions? Let us know, comment below. This plant is also a really fun kids herb. If you work with kids or you feel like you're a kid at heart, this is a really fun one. It's really easy to identify. Um, it grows in this way all up and down the East Coast. I've seen it in grassy areas all up and down the Appalachian Trail. If you're interested in material that would help you support, support this education of you or your kids, I'd like to recommend Christine Brown. So she is, creates these herbal roots zines that you can either get as part of Herb Fairies or you can get on their own. And they're really cool magazines that are, you download, I downloaded this and printed it out myself. You can't actually purchase it, print it out like this. You have to get it um, from her website. And it's really, um, easy to get and have it on your computer. So in each of her zines, they, she gives information about plants. This one is about Plantago. She gives supply list for a calendar. If you're new to homeschooling or you homeschool or you want a map of how you can incorporate plant knowledge into your life, it's really handy. She has it right there. Um, and it's all these really fun herbal recipes, as well as giving you information about folklore and um, historical uses of plants and actions. Check out the actions of Plantago. Medicinally, and she uh, does a really nice job of giving her um, references. If you like that kind of thing, it's really nice to have that on hand as well. Um, plantain is an alternative, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, all these anti things. Basically, it's really helpful at um, making sure that your skin stays really nice and helpful, uh, healthy, but it can also have some of these actions inside the body. So things like expectorant, decongestant, demulcent, it's really wonderful plant to work with. If you have uh, dryness in your lungs um, or some type of infection going on, this is not meant to treat or diagnose anything. If you have that stuff going on, you wanna make sure that you're staying healthy and getting the treatment that you need. But if you wanna explore the use of plantain in this way, I'd like to make a little tea 
if I have um, chest, uh, either a little bit of congestion or a dry cough, make a tea of plantain leaves, and it can be really help, help, helpful um, as both an expectorant and that demulcent quality to sort of soothe out some dry lungs that I'm currently experiencing, actually. So, plantago. Moistening, cooling for hot conditions. I find that it can be really helpful in these same ways in my digestive tract. So, there have been a lot of studies and stories about using plantain in the digestive tract, specifically for things like diverticulitis. So, I haven't personally worked with it in that way. If that's a condition that you experience, you want to make sure you're in contact with your medical provider. But the action of healing and that Band-Aid experience, a lot of people have that internally as well. You may have had experience with Plantago um, from your local pharmacy because these seeds have been used for a long time as a bulk uh, laxative, full of fiber. They are a key ingredient in a product known as Metamucil. If you've ever used Metamucil or you can see it in your uh, local pharmacy, they are incorporating the Plantago, the seed stock, into that product as a bulk laxative. And you can do that at home too. I could definitely add some of these seeds to my food to provide that in my diet. So these seed stalks produce more Plantago very easily. Some people like to grow it in a pot because they feel like they can contain it. But I also really like to have it in my garden bed. Sometimes I have it in a pot just so that I have, um, I can keep an eye on it or bring it inside if I'm feeling like I need that kind of company. But you can also use these seeds, you can see them. I can just plant it in the soil and these seeds are so little that I would just drop them on the soil and shake the soil just a little bit and I'm going to have planta Plantago all over in this area, hopefully. Hopefully. If the summer rains, don't wash all those little seeds away. But you can see growing in the ground, it stays really low to the ground. This plant is, has been around for a while. It used to have a lot of other Plantago nearby, but it lost some of its sun. It likes a little bit of sun but not direct sun here in Central Florida. In more uh, mild summers further north, it's fine in full sun, but here in Florida, it really needs some protection from the intensity in the day. So you can see it stays really low to the ground and you can, you can identify it by these seed stalks. This is, this is um, a commonality of all of the different Plantago varieties, that along with the Venation. So, other ways I like to use Plantago, other than nibbling on it from my yard or using it to help with bee stings or bug bites, the tea is really lovely, food, it's nutritious, the poultice I pointed out before. Um, I also like to use it as an herbal oil. Typically, I would either use fresh or dried. I, I prefer fresh. And I chop it up. I make sure to put it through the mortar and pestle and, or some other way of really open up those plant cell walls. Some people add their oil and the plantago into a blender and blend it up and then let it sit. Or there are heat bath. Um, recipes out there. There are a lot of different ways of getting your herbal oil and oil options. I use olive oil a lot for topical preparations. I find that it 
uh, absorbs the medicinal qualities of plants really nicely, but it does have that olive oil aroma. You can use almost any oil you want that you would feel comfortable using on the top of your skin. One oil that is commonly used for um, plant material uh, topically is an oil that you may have heard of. I first heard of it really whenever I was a kid. It's used, castor oil is used internally for things like constipation, but it also makes a really good topical oil. It has also a unique scent, but it does a nice job of helping the plant material really get absorbed into your skin. So, Plantago herbal oil can be fantastic for topical um, benefits. After you make the herbal oil, you could also make a salve, which is a whole other process and you need a blender for that, which I don't have in my garden. And the salve could be made into um, chapstick tubes. I have my uh, local herbalist friend, Deb, who's also one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living, makes a fantastic first aid salve that I would sell to you, but I get and highly recommend, but know that I don't get any kickbacks in any way for it. It's just a really nice blend. If you're interested in that, you can email her or the school and we'll put you in touch. There are lots of recipes out there for salves and herbal oils. I hope you get your hands into them and enjoy the process. You can also incorporate Plantago via the tincture. If you're trying to use Plantago and the qualities more internally, you could have plantain uh, as a tincture. I would just fill up my jar about three quarters of the way with the fresh leaf and then I would fill it the rest of the way with my favorite alcohol and I'd let it sit for four to six weeks shaking it every day and then I have this wonderful access to some of the plantain qualities in that tincture that I'm able to take with me wherever I need to go. It's really helpful. Thank you for joining me in the garden today. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube that you like and subscribe. We have lots of really fun videos, both here in my garden and all over Central Florida and even Vermont. So check them out and we'll see you next time in the garden. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or email me directly, maggie at holisticlivingschool.org. Have a good day.